what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Excuse the lighting, man. Again, excuse the lighting. This uh, hotel that I'm in, I think they set me up, man. I've never been in a hotel room with such bad lighting. This uh, this is the hotel that the Astros uh, team was staying in for the World Series, so I think it might be a little home cooking going on. They're probably trying to make my lighting bad so that I don't do any good videos, you know. I mean, I think they got it in for me like that. But anyway, I'm going to work with what I got to work with, man. The bottom line is that you hear it. It ain't necessary to see what I got to say. It's all about hearing it. And what I got to say, man, going to shake your boots. This dude, Stephen A. Smith, man, we got to go ahead on and call it what it is. He's been broken, man. He's been broken. You know how they used to break a, a buck back in the day? He's been broken. This dude fixed his mouth to say that the hoodies that Nike's, Nike made for the basketball players to, to, to wear, that's a part of their uniform, uh, shouldn't have been made because in his mind, it, um, it injects fear in white people. This is his quote. You got a lot of those white folks in the audience who are going to think it's Trayvon Martin being revisited. You see, on one hand, that's a bigoted comment to assume that all white people fear black people somehow. Like every white person in that audience is looking at black men with hoodies and thinking, oh, they're thugs, they're gonna kill me. They're gonna try to rob me. These are multi-millionaire basketball players who can buy you, Steve, can buy you over and over and over again. I'm sure it's not one white person in the whole stadium, in that whole arena, that feared anybody wearing those hoodies. In fact, you the only one probably even thought about the Trayvon Martin making that connection. Nobody else was even thinking about that until you opened your big fat ass mouth, like you always do. And then you're gonna try to use some passive aggression talking about um, J.R. Smith is a good player, but first you're going to dog him out talking about he's sitting on the bench wearing a hoodie in the fourth quarter of the Boston game. And then when J.R. clapped back at you, then he's going to say, well, he's a good player. I like him, but he needs to step his game up, and then he wouldn't have to worry about what I'm talking about. Man, shut your ass up. You sound corny, man. You sound broken. What's wrong with you, man? When did it happen? At what point of your life, man, did you sell it out, man? Had to be a meeting that took place. Had to be something you said. And you say, look, man, you know, my route going to be buck dancing and selling out. That's my route. My route going to be to throw black folks under the bus. That's going to be my route. My route, my claim to fame going to be to is going to be to attack black i'll talk about these issues i'll say something mildly about general issues but i'm going to be the expert when it comes to attacking black people and boy you got a big ass mouth when it comes to attacking black people especially black athletes I don't know what happened to you, man. I heard you tried to play some kind of ball and you just wasn't good enough. And maybe you got a chip on your shoulder because of that. Maybe you're mad at the guys that made it, man, and they got everything that you want. 
they got everything. I mean, you, you got yourself some fame. You carved out some fame for yourself. But you ain't no NBA basketball star. You ain't got that kind of fame, and you ain't got that kind of money. And it hurts you, I do believe. I mean, you go all the way in on black folks. Man, let it be somebody else, though. Man, you be tiptoeing. You scared to even speak on other issues. You damn sure don't go after the, the white athletes with the same amount of passion that you do to black athletes. You go all the way in. And then got the nerve to say something like, well, he's a good player. I like him. He just needs to step his game up. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. Your comments was bigoted. I hope some white person called you on it. We'll see how you react then. We know what that's going to look like. You a mine, massive boy. You mine. Get that, get that line, boy. Get, 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 get in that line, boy. Get that. Get back right. Know that You know that language, don't you? You know that language real good. This dude also, by making the comments he made, he's blaming the victim. Like Trayvon Martin got killed because he had a hoodie on. No. Trayvon Martin got killed because he was accosted by a bigot who was a bully and wanted to push somebody around and he found his target. He saw a young black boy walking alone and he didn't like it. He didn't like the idea. He didn't like the kid. He wanted to get into some trouble. He wanted to kick up some dust. He wanted to bully somebody. He found his target. And unfortunately, Trayvon Martin was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he started a fight with him, got the worst in, pulled out his gun, and killed him. Had nothing to do with no damn hoodie. When they start talking about things like that, those are deflection techniques. That's just an excuse. That's just the excuse they want to get. They got to come up with something. They got to come up with something to try to justify the murder. Anything. Go grab your kindergarten teacher. All right. Did he color outside of the lines? Ah, okay. Got him now. We got him now. Colored outside of the lines. But it gets you on anything, man. Anything to try to blemish your, your character. To blemish your reputation. That's the goal. Every single time, man. If y'all ain't caught on, man, something wrong. I don't care who they kill. I don't care what the circumstances are. The very first thing they're going to do is pull their criminal record first. If they ain't got a criminal record, they'll make up one. They'll go after your character. Oh, uh, he had an argument in the cafeteria uh, with the cafeteria attendant because his food was cold. Ah, I got him now. We got him now. Yeah, bad temper. Bad temper. Arguing with the cafeteria lady. Got him now. Anything. Stephen A. Smith, man, you one of the worst, dude. You one of the worst. I don't see how you do it. I don't see how you, I don't know if you have children, but if you do, I'm sure they're ashamed of you. I'm sure that you are a very big disappointment. I don't know how your mom and your daddy feel about you, but they can't be proud. You sorry, dude. You're a real sorry dude. This dude said, uh, if, if Trayvon Martin, oh, and here's the thing. Well, let me finish the point first. To finish, to finish the point, he said that you have a lot of white people, white folks in the audience who is going to think it's Trayvon Martin being revisited. He conjured up this 
this this old stuff. Nobody was even thinking about that till he said that. Now, so I wonder if Trayvon Martin hadn't gotten shot, if he had not gotten shot, would Stephen A. Smith still have looked at those hoodies on those basketball uniforms and said, Nike need to get rid of them damn hoodies. He need to get rid of them damn hoodies. That's crazy. Man, that is crazy. He was serious. He really sounded like he was a weirdo. He going off over some damn, a damn article of clothing, a hoodie. And I can guarantee you everybody in that damn audience, whoever they were, wear hoodies. Everybody wear hoodies. Everybody wear, everybody wear a damn hoodie. In fact, uh, Stephen A., I saw you wearing a damn hoodie when you took that picture with your homeboy, Sheriff Clark, two peas in a pie. Birds of a feather. Oh, but now, since the multi-millionaire basketball player is wearing a hoodie, it's a problem. No, Stephen A., you the problem. Your mama should be embarrassed and your daddy should have pulled out. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Texas.